Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe here in Budapest. I hope everybody has had a great weekend so far. Hi, Pachu. Hi, Supun. Good to see students joining in on time. As usual, these classes, the strategies, the materials do come from our website, aehelp.com. For the academic version of the test, that's academicenglishhelp.com. We have lots of help for IELTS, original practice exams, and we have much more. We can even help you with your academic CV or statement of purpose. So check out that website. Uh, for general IELTS, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S-Help.com. That's general IELTSHelp.com, where we have lots and lots of videos and materials for the general version of the test. Hi, for Dobbs. Hi, Preeti. Hi, Esra. Murasa. Good to see you in class. Hi, Reba. All right, everyone. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, check out the new uh, South Korean uh, speaking interview. It's quite good. Uh, band 7, 7.5 for that performance. And if you have questions about the exam or our products, send it to my email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Hi, Happy Flower. Good to see you in this class also. All right. Uh, to get our books, electronic or digital uh, or uh, paperback, uh, you can get it from Amazon. Search for... A helps academic, IELTS, G helps general. And uh, this is our um, speaking part three class today, last class for this week. No class tomorrow, Monday or Tuesday. We'll be back with more classes on Wednesday for live streaming. Until then, uh, look at the uh, loads of videos on the YouTube channel and definitely check out the websites. All right. Let me just open up the uh, right one here. And there we go, our speaking part three questions for today. We just had a speaking part two uh, class, which was the cue card. Uh, our, of course, uh, our members were in that class. Hi, Eugene. Uh, we were talking about a fun place to spend the day. That was the part two cue card. Uh, and of course, this part three is continuing on uh, from that part two. Part three is related or relevant to uh, part uh, two. Sometimes it's uh, very closely connected to part two, part three. Sometimes it's loosely connected, but the idea is that it is connected, okay? So remember this, it's really important. Uh, part three is not completely separate from part two. You need to make connections between part three and part two. So uh, part three is a discussion continuation, discussion format continuation, of part two, where the examiner asks you uh, questions relevant to part two and looks for details as well as high English ability. Okay. So the examiner here is basically looking at how well can you uh, hold a conversation on a specific topic, okay? Uh, and of course, in this case, it's related to uh, enjoyment. So here, part three is let's talk about entertainment. Okay, let's talk about entertainment. So right away, you should start to visualize entertaining activities that people partake in, okay? Uh, so let's get into it, and then I will teach you strategy and skills as we go along with maybe some vocabulary as well. Uh, here we go. Uh, what are some famous theme parks people go to visit around the world? 
Now, again, this is a speaking class, so please, students, repeat after me when you hear uh, what I say. Repeat questions, repeat answers, nice and loud. Don't just mumble under your tongue. Don't mumble, okay? Nice and loud. Enunciate. Enunciating is clearly voicing words. It's very important. And answer in full sentences, okay? So I want to hear and see. Unfortunately, I can't hear you. But I want to see full sentences. I want to see answers, explanations, and examples. I want to see qualitative and quantitative information. Okay? So if you just say Disneyland, I'll give you a band four. Okay? I won't give you any more because that's an answer. It means you understood my question, but it sure doesn't mean that you can speak fluently. Okay? Satisfying Time says, hmm, personally, I believe aquatic parks are the stars of this. Um, sure. Can you give me an example of Satisfying Times or can you tell me why aquatic stars are visited by people from all over the world? Okay. Sabir, I am Canadian. For those of you who are wondering, and my English is West Coast Canadian. Okay, for Dobbs, I respect that you're making a connection to part two, but be careful. Uh, the question is asking, what are some famous theme parks people go to visit around the world? It's theme parks, theme parks, okay? And you can make it up. <laughs> it doesn't have to be true, all right? Uh, Rachel Valencia says, one of the most popular theme parks around the world is Disneyland. Yeah. Where is Disneyland? Where is it located? Who goes there? How many people? From where? Okay. All right. Give me some full answers. Let's get going here, students. Put some effort into it. Come on. All right. Marasa says, Certain popular amusement parks around the globe where individuals frequently go are the National Park of France. Uh, yeah, Marasa, you took that away. I can't read it anymore um, because, yeah, it's an amusement park. Uh, theme parks and amusement parks are parks uh, that uh, have roller coaster rides and so on, okay? Pachu says, some famous theme parks people go to visit around the world are Disneyland Park and Universal Studios in the USA because these places are fun to relax. Sure, yeah, let's see some more answers. So, um, the most notorious and frequented adventure parks uh, people visit from all over the globe are Disneyland in the US, France, or Japan, as well as Universal Studios in America and Japan, as they are not only big, but also offer the most advanced technology in theme park entertainment. Millions of people visit these parks each year, okay? So I'm pushing you for that band nine, and I can see that some students are now realizing, yeah, wait a second, I can say a fair bit about this if I think of 
Disneyland and Disney World and Universal Studios. And there are some other ones. Lanthew says the popular theme parks in the whole world are Disney World and Latte Amusement Park, which is located in the most crowded cities and countries like Singapore and Korea. Very good, Lanthew. Uh, Satisfying Times says, hmm, personally, I believe aquatic parks are the best of these. Uh, because people by nature like water and usually uh, the time of the holiday is summer and the weather is hot, so people need to cool down. Um, yeah, um, there's Disney Sea in Japan, I believe, which is a very famous water park. All right. Uh, again, you can make it up. It doesn't have to be real, okay? The examiner is not going to check on whether it's real or not. Disneyland is easy, all right? Uh, So here's my answer. The most notorious and frequented adventure parks people visit from all over the globe are Disneyland in the US, France, or Japan, as well as Universal Studios in America and Japan, as they are not only big, but also offer the most advanced technology in theme park entertainment. Millions of people visit these places each year. I hope you're repeating me. One more time, the most notorious, notorious means famous, frequent, you can use it as a verb, frequented means most people visit there. So one more time, the most notorious and frequented adventure parks people visit from all over the globe are Disneyland in the US, France and Japan, as well as Universal Studios in America and Japan as they are not only big, but also offer the most advanced technology in theme park entertainment. Millions of people visit these parks each year. Millions is a quantitative number. Again, do you want high band scores? Speak in full sentences, give answers, explanations, examples, use quantitative language as well. Okay. All right, now uh, get ready for the uh, follow-up questions. What has made these theme parks so famous? Why is Universal Studios in Disneyland so famous? I think you can come up with the answer for this quite quickly if you think about it. Okay. S. Tick, without a doubt. One of the best theme parks is Disneyland in Paris. It's a place where adults and children go back in time and have lots of fun. Very good, S-T-E-K. That's a good answer for the first one. Roshni says, from around the globe, most people go to Disneyland in California because it has more fun and relaxation, and it's not only a different theme park, but also extremely enjoyable. Roshni, good. Careful with the end there. Eureka Maha says, the most popular theme park that people usually visit is Harry Potter Studios in the UK. Very good, Eureka. Okay. Gurkharat says, because there are prominent movies and cartoons all over the world. Gurkharat, too short. Uh, You have to think of the examiner as an alien. What do you mean, movies and cartoons? What movies? What cartoons? What are you talking about? I don't know about movies and cartoons. Tell me in detail. Okay. Laf Panu says, well, I believe that technology and globalization has made these theme parks famous among people. Lav Panu, very good. Um, I think one word that you're looking for is advertising. They're well advertised. Rahul K says, the most advanced technologies, along with knowing the visitors' preferences, have made these versatile choices to go with. These theme parks never fail to disappoint visitors. Okay, that's good. That works. Uh, Rahul K. I like it. Begzod says, as I just mentioned, having modern technology are the primary reason why many people go there, as people can enjoy various activities with a high-quality service. Okay, good. Swastika Shrestha says, well, I think promotions and advertising is the main reason these parks are so famous, and it's definitely worth it for entertainment purposes. Very good, Swastika. Farhan says, as I already mentioned, these theme parks have advanced technology 
that help these parks become novel and provide entertainment to all. So these parks are a must visit on the bucket list. Okay, good Farhan. Farhan's giving us an expression, bucket list. A bucket list is a list of to-do activities before we die. So people dream that they will do certain activities before they die. That list is called their bucket list. Thanks for sharing that with us, Farhan. Uh, Juan Pablo Avila says, Disneyland is recognized around the world because of the games, rides, and entertainment that are related to famous cartoon movies like A Little Mermaid, Frozen. Uh, and people greatly uh, appreciate this and enjoy it very much. Very good. A couple of examples will work well there. But good job. So great, students. You're realizing what to do. Um, not only the incredible uh, technology which makes these parks uh, enjoyable has made them famous, but all of the movies that people have come to know and love like Little Mermaid and Frozen which are the themes of these parks rides and entertainment make them a family destination for people everywhere. Okay, so here we go. Not only the incredible technology which makes these parks enjoyable has made them famous, but all of the movies that people have come to know and love, like Little Mermaid and Frozen, which are the themes of these parks, rides, and entertainment, make them a family destination for people everywhere okay alvina says such parks as disneyland and universal studios help us to be a part of cartoons and movies that we have been watching since childhood these places are the best places to have fun and create unforgettable memories alvina very good uh, notorious silin wang is not necessarily a derogatory term it can be it can be famous for negative reasons, but it can be just simply famous as well, okay? Uh, Little Mermaid is the uh, half-human, half-fish uh, creature, Sundar Akira. All right, uh, so next question. How has entertainment improved in the past three decades? Okay, again, want to get a high band score? Full sentence answers. Okay, full sentence answers. Happy Flower says, of course, there are lots of enjoyable activities. For me, one of the themes is fantastic memory that people always mention for their whole life. Happy Flower, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by the second half of your comment. I want to try and rethink that one. All right. Uh, Danish uh, Sharma says, uh, thanks for the videos on speaking, uh, sir. Uh, my feelings over the moon because I got eight banned in speaking yesterday. Hashtag thanks once again. Danish, you are super welcome. I'm glad that you got a band eight. That is a fantastic uh, score good for you double thumbs up thanks for sharing okay uh, Begzod says with the advancements in technology specifically security systems thousands of individuals have been spending their hours uh, Begzod I think you're a little all over the map on that one I think you could keep it clearer okay 
uh, without thinking about any breaks and unexpected accidents is 30 years prior. People were afraid of going there. Um, okay. I, I don't know, Bagzot. I think that's a little bit off mark. Uh, Juan Pablo says, entertainment has improved thanks to uh, technology. It can uh, make the experience more enjoyable and realistic. What do you mean, Juan Pablo? Are you thinking about 3D, 4D, 4DX? What are you thinking? Give me a little bit more detail. Punjabi Filmy Mistakes says, well, entertainment has undergone a plethora of changes within three decades. Like what, Punjabi Filmy Mistakes? Just for using the word plethora, I can't give you a high mark. Plethora just means many. What do you mean? What kind of changes? Satisfying Times says, 30 years ago, the entertainment was a really basic um, physical activities, but nowadays we can see real-time 5D computer-based zoo, which uses the enjoyment of animals. Satisfying Times, I think you're trying a little bit too hard on that one. It's getting away from you. Um, so don't over stretch careful with that jas ram Gahria says as compared to the past with present invest inventions increasing vast technology like mobiles and others it really improves the entertainment level all right uh careful with grammar and word choice students uh, Ferdov says advancements in technology has transformed entertainment to be more realistic than ever before, like 3D and 4D films where the viewers feel as if they are part of the movie, like the most recent Spider-Man film released in theaters. Right, Ferdov? Very good. Okay. Um, so, over the last... 30 years, entertainment has improved leaps and bounds thanks to the incredible advancements in visual and robotic technology, which has brought to life movies in three and four D theaters, like the most recent release of Spider Man, where a viewer feels as though they too are slinging high through above the streets of New York City. All right. So I'm getting a little bit excited on this answer, but follow with me. I'm pushing you to be a band eight, band nine uh, student. So um, you can do it, just like one of our students just shared that they got a band eight. So you can do it. Uh, here we go. Repeat after me. Notice present perfect. How has entertainment improved in the past three decades? Three, three decades, 10 years. Okay. Over the past 30 years, right away, I'm reflecting the same time frame. Over the past 30 years, entertainment has improved leaps and bounds. Leaps is like when you're leaping and bounds is when you're jumping. So it's like boingy, boingy, like a rabbit. Okay, big improvements. So over the last 30 years, entertainment has improved leaps and bounds thanks to the incredible advancements in visual and robotic technology, which has brought to life movies in 3D and 4D theaters like the most recent release of Spider-Man, where a viewer feels as they too are slinging high above the streets 
of New York City. Slinging means you're swinging and slinging. Sling means to shoot a rope and then swing. Uh, English has a very rich vocabulary. In case some of you are wondering, it's roughly 1.5 million words in the English language. So indeed, we even have a word for holding a rope and swinging. It's called slinging, slinging, okay? Amarjeet says, tech has changed and developed uh, the information sector since 30 years ago by digital things, including big screens for movies. Amarjeet, don't use the word things. Zero value in conversation. Uh, here we go. Are there any activities which have become less enjoyable? So... Follow-up question, okay? The examiner is always going to ask you a follow-up question. Okay? So, are there any activities which have become less enjoyable over the past 30 years? Pa Juan, sorry, Juan Pablo says... When talking about entertainment that are less enjoyable nowadays, we can mention walking around the park because it's often too crowded. Also, eating out has become too expensive and less accessible. Juan Pablo, great. Okay, it's up to your opinion. If you feel that way, let him know. Sure. Yeah, you can even give an example, Juan Pablo. These days, a nice steak dinner is, you know, upwards to $200. Sure. Um, satisfying time says there are several activities which we used to enjoy a lot like camping and groups. Nowadays, individuals prefer to sit at home using their computers instead of enjoying nature. Yeah, sure. That works. Satisfying times. Dr. Mazin Salah says recently, mainly physical activities have faded out as advancements of technology have forced people indoors. Sure. Happy Flower says entertainment has improved rapidly in the last three decades with skilled laborers, technology and advertisement. Um, okay, that's a little bit vague, Happy Flower. I think that's for the previous question, but thank you for the heart, Fahad. Um, Begzad says physical activities such as walking and spending time together for a picnic have lost their entertainment value as individuals... Uh, try new entertainment uh, theaters like for uh, new entertainment activities like 4D theaters. Begs out, that's good. Okay. Versagli 1.0 says definitely yes. There can be uh, it, several activities can be observed which have become boring these days. For example, walking around parks without any sort of entertainment. All right. Yeah, sure. Are there any activities which have become less enjoyable? Um, yes. Technology has had a negative impact on some activities also. in recent years such as family dinner time in the past people used to sit around the dinner table and enjoy great family conversations but these days it is replaced by family members not even sitting together. And if they do, they are all playing with their mobile devices instead of paying attention to each other or even better instead of enjoying 
each other's company. Okay? I think we can all agree that that's common to see these days. Repeat after me. Are there any activities which have become less enjoyable? Yes, technology has had a negative impact on some activities also in recent years, such as family dinner time. In the past, people used to sit around the dinner table and enjoy great family conversations. But these days, it is replaced by family members not even sitting together. And if they are, they are all playing with their mobile devices instead of enjoying each other's company. All right. Quang Nguyen says, as weird as it sounds, modern roller coasters and rides became traumatizing and dangerous for some individuals. The fact that people won't try riding them just from a glance is depressing. Yeah, sure. Quang, I agree. Uh, it's a good example. Some people would agree with you that older uh, nostalgic roller coasters in some ways were more enjoyable than the ones these days. Okay. All right, uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, students, you're doing a great job. I see lots of comments. I am reading actually more comments than I'm uh, saying. Uh, so I read a lot faster, of course, than what you can hear. But I can't read all of, them, all of them out loud because then you just will hear me babble super fast and that doesn't make sense. But anyway, keep writing your comments. I will try to catch different students at different times, okay? So don't give up, and I will correct you as I read, okay? Uh, here we go. Next question. Conditional. Pay attention. If. Use the question in your answer. Use the if. If people spend much of their time working and do not participate in fun activities, what could be a negative result of this? What could be a negative result of this? If people spend much of their time working and do not participate in fun activities, what could be a negative result of this? Farhan says, working overtime can have detrimental effects on physical and mental health of individuals as they tend to develop obesity and certain other ailments like depression and anxiety. They are unable to unwind their minds. Yeah, very good. Uh, Begzod, I th think you mean depression, uh, spelling. Uh, Juan Pablo says, when people don't enjoy their spare time, they can get stressed out, which can lead to emotional and mental issues like depression and other health problems like eating disorders. Very good. Very well put. Okay, you will get a nice band score for that, Juan Pablo. That's your road to band nine right there, that answer. Absolutely. Okay. Roshni Kunte says, without a doubt, yes, if people work for eight or nine hours for the whole week without taking a break or having fun, this will lead to building up uh, more pressure, increasing uh, towards uh, depression and even to uh, diseases. Very good, Roshni. Just Roshni, grammar, word use, review, okay, review, review. Uh, Wahid Salim says, there's no work. Uh, where was that? Wahid Salim says, there's no, there's no work-life balance. It would impact their psychology. Uh, Wahid, what you're trying to say, if there's no balance between work and fun, it will negatively impact their psyche. Psyche is another way to say mind. It's not psychology, it's psyche. Okay, psyche. Psyche means mind. It's just part of that word. Okay. All right. 666 six, six, Remo 18. If people spend too much of their time working, they tend to be more focused on the task at hand, which when done excessively results in mechanical behavior. 666 uh, six, 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 Remo 18. Uh, it's not mechanical behavior. It's called obsessive compulsive behavior which can even become a disorder called OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, when people start to do very mechanical behaviors, okay? Uh, Reba says, if people don't participate in extracurricular activities, rather than working all day, it will affect them both mentally and physically, making them just depressed, 
frustrated and overweight. Yeah, Reba, if you say physically, you have to uh, give an example of a physical ailment like obesity. All right. All play and all work and no play make people angry, as the saying goes. <laughs> okay, now careful students, only do something like this if you have this English knowledge, all right? All work and no play make people angry, as the saying goes. If people do not take time to unwind, they will eventually become distressed both mentally and physically with possible consequences like depression and obesity. Okay. All right. Uh, repeat after me, students. If people spend much of their time working and do not participate in fun activities, what could be a negative result of this? All work and no play make people angry, as the saying goes. If people do not take time to unwind, they will eventually become distressed, both mentally and physically, with possible consequences like depression and obesity. Okay? Now... A very common part three follow-up question by the examiner is, uh, can you elaborate? It basically means, can you go into details? Can you express that more? When you hear that, think examples and quantitative language, okay? So don't just repeat what you've said, but think about examples. So what is an example of this? And what is a measurable way to explain this? Think about that, and then you'll have a good answer and get a good score, okay? Sundhar Akira says, if people work for many hours, uh, without having fun, this can lead to physical and mental stresses uh, such as chronic headaches. Okay, Sunhar, I read it. I corrected it. If you didn't catch it, don't worry. It's at 37 minutes in the video. So the video will be available on the YouTube channel later, uh, about an hour after the stream is finished and YouTube uh, digests the stream. So you can go back, check the 37, 38 minute mark, and then you can listen to that correction again, okay? All right, Amarjeet Singh says, people can become not only aggressive, but also victims of obesity if they don't participate in entertaining activities. Good. Alvina says, hmm, it's a very tough question. I believe that working extra hours is not good for health. For instance, people become exhausted and it can cause horrible impacts on, uh, on their emotional stability, leading to depression. Careful, Alvina, with logic mistakes. Horrible impacts as emotional, such as emotional, emotional uh, instability, instability, such as emotional instability, Alvina. Um, okay. Uh, satisfying Time says, uh, emerging with work and forgetting the personal life makes 4% of U.S. citizens suffer from loneliness every year. All right, so you're throwing a fact out there, Satisfying Times. That's all right. Uh, Morasa says, as I mentioned in my previous question, individuals face problems of obesity due to spending 9 to 10 hours in front of a computer. People don't have time uh, to go to the gym or even for a walk? Sure. Rahul says, like 30% of people in India have been impacted by obesity and depression um, much more than 20 years ago because of stress 
and not being able to devote time to entertaining activities. Yeah, very good. Bagzod, don't be greedy. I read lots of your comments. I really do. Uh, Reba says, when we work 8 to 10 hours in a day, we get exhausted and tired. So we need to relax by attending social activities and we should avoid overeating to prevent obesity. Okay. Uh, Rustin uh, Karimi says, they will get fat and lose their temper easily. They're going to lose their friends uh, just focusing on work and their quality of life will diminish. Diminish. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so I would say certainly. Uh, for instance, when a businessman spends six days a week, uh, 12 hours a day at the office and does not take time for relaxation, like watching an hour of TV in the evening, they will eventually become mentally exhausted, irritable, and develop a pessimistic outlook on life. All right. So yeah, it's just giving some visible, measurable uh, examples. So when you hear that, can you elaborate? That's when you can use, for instance, or for example, um, because uh, that's an elaboration. An example is an elaboration, okay? So repeat after me. Certainly, for instance, when a businessman spends six days a week, 12 hours a day at the office and does not take time for relaxation, like watching an hour of TV in the evening, they will eventually become mentally exhausted, irritable, and develop a pessimistic outlook on life, yelling at their friends and family, and so on. All right? Okay, and provided that you're doing a good job and you've answered these questions uh, completely, quickly, you're getting a high band score, the examiner may have time to ask you some more questions and say, let's talk about exciting activities. And here we have a few more questions. These ones I'm going to leave for you to do for homework. Which types of adventure activities have become big business these days? Why do people like doing these? Are there any thrilling sports that should not be allowed? Why? When is it a bad idea to participate in activities that evoke a great deal of adrenaline? Can you give more details? So some further uh, challenging questions for you to think about over the next three days. Practice them. Record them on your mobile phone in MP3 format. Send them to my email. And I will tell you what band score you would get for that speaking. Here is my email. A-D-R-I-A-N, my name, Adrian, at aehelp.com. I hope everybody's enjoyed this class, has learned some useful information, vocabulary, grammar. And uh, again, for those of you who have not seen our latest uh, HD video on the channel, check it out. It's with a South Korean candidate who scores a band 7.5. It's on the channel. Look for it aehelp.com for academic IELTS and G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general. Next live class kicks off on Wednesday at 15 o'clock Central European Time, CET. Okay, that's Wednesday, Central European Time, 15 o'clock. And we have classes Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Bye for now, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Much love to all of you from the heart of Europe, Budapest. Bye for now.